Skills to pay the bills. A new startup is offering loans to students who take courses with a quantifiable payoff. The Hustle, Friday, January 27th, 2017. Brought to you by Listen Sound Company. You can't put a price on a good education, but Climb Credit is damn well trying. The finance startup provides student loans for educational programs with quantifiable returns, aka degrees that are most likely to result in stable, higher paying jobs for graduates because being well-rounded is valuable, but the benefits are harder to measure. Climb, grad, Climb calculates return rates based on the increase in earnings after completing a course, minus the cost of the course itself. They track all of their loans right alongside things like subject area, job offers, and salaries, and refuse to lend money for fields like acting or modeling unless they show justifiable returns. And as a result, they focus heavily on skill-based courses, paywall, like coding programs, welding school, or learning how to program robots for auto assembly lines. Basically, they're the STEM-crazy parents who refuse to bankroll their kids' education unless they major in something practical. Plus, unlike other student loan companies, the programs they finance are typically less than a year long, making them ineligible for federal funding, funding granted to two- or four-year degrees. Climb also allows students to start making tiny payments as soon as they take out a loan, rather than accumulating interest in the shadows and surprising them with a huge bill on graduation day. And, although Climb's student loans accumulate interest at about 9% a year, nearly double the federal rate, their default rates are promising in the low single digits. Investing in education that actually pays the bills, what a novel idea, say the two writers. Social media, living the dream experts make better bosses. Most studies on workplace leaders focus on their personality, management style, and how those things affect the company. But what about a leader's competence? If your boss doesn't genuinely understand the work you're doing, is that a problem? And if she does, how much of an impact can it have? A trio of college professors set out to get the answers. Their study, published in the Harvard Business Review, looked at 35,000 random employees in the United States and Britain, and since competence is vague, is vague as fuck, they measured three distinct things. Whether the boss could, if necessary, do the employee's job. Whether the boss worked his or her way up inside the company. The boss's level of technical competence as assessed by the worker. What they found was that employees are exponentially happier, happier when working under someone with deep expertise in the core activity of the business. In fact, among American workers, having a technically competent boss was significantly more important than their salary. So, what does this mean? Plenty of people believe that certain personality traits, not technical expertise, make a good manager. They'll argue that the sharp, charismatic guy or gal should be in charge and that promoting, say, an engineer to lead other engineers is a mistake. This research proves otherwise. It also supports other studies showing that hospitals are better off led by doctors rather than general managers and that colleges do better when top researchers, not administrators, are in charge. In conclusion, employees are happiest and most productive when their boss fully understands and appreciates the work they're doing. Pretty simple. As Basecamp co-founder David Heinemeyer Hansen points out, this is one explanation for why Apple and Microsoft struggled when they lost their tech CEOs, Jobs and Gates, and sales guys took over, Scully and Balmer. And it's also, Hansen says, a likely reason why venture capitalists have stopped bringing in an adult to run companies once the founders hit a few snags. Social media, adults ruin everything. It's not easy being Google. Because when you're king of the hill, people are always looking for reasons to push you off. And while Google's quarter four review grew 22% from last year's, Wall Street isn't cutting the search engine any slack. Their shares took a hit yesterday after heavy spending on facilities. Its capital expenditures were up 46% last, from last year to $3.1 billion, caused profits to come in slightly under expectations. But their X-Files are doing well. Relatively speaking, that is. Google's miscellaneous Other Bets category, which includes autonomous vehicle startup Waymo, and our false prophet, Fiber, Google You Promised Us, 
increased revenue by 62%. This bump comes on the heels of their restructure, which gave investors more visibility into the losses of some of Google's more exploratory investments, like internet balloons. However, the experimental division is still $1.08 billion in the red, compared with $1.21 billion in quarter four losses last year. So it looks like they'll be doing some spring cleaning moving forward, or in other words, focusing their efforts where it counts. Namely, cloud services and voice-controlled hardware in an attempt to chip away at Amazon's lead in both. CEO Sundar Pichai says they'll be banking heavily on their cloud division with greater investments in infrastructure and headcount in 2017. Amazon Web Services still holds nearly double the market share. At the same time, Google also plans to leverage their home and Pixel devices' strength in voice control technology to give the Echo a run for its money, because, according to Pachai, the battle for connected homes has only started playing out. So sure, they're off to a slow start, but it could be a tortoise hair scenario, and either way, Amazon better not sleep on them. Social media. Stay woke, Bezos. IBM's coming in hot with predictions for 2022. The tech behemoth recently released its latest 5 in 5 list, highlighting the 5 innovations they believe will have the greatest impact on our lives come 2022. Here they are. Thanks to artificial intelligence, our speech will be a window into our mental health. According to IBM, what we say and write will be used as indicators of our mental health and physical well-being. Seems pretty nuts, but considering a team from USC built a program last year to identify signs of depression based on speech patterns, maybe it's not. Superhero vision will be a thing. Sunglasses that help colorblind people see color do exist, but those types of devices are mostly ex experimental. In the future, IBM sees those becoming commonplace, as well as devices that allow us to see infrared images, making it possible for, say, self-driving cars to see through fog. Macroscopes will change how we understand our planet. Macroscopes are systems of algorithms that could help us gather data from millions of devices and analyze it on a large scale. Medical labs on a chip will revolutionize medicine. Imagine having a full biochemistry lab the size of your palm in your house, allowing you to get accurate diagnoses at a low cost to catch diseases earlier than we ever thought possible. Smart sensors will detect pollution at the speed of light. IBM thinks smart sensors will be implanted in the ground or attached to drones to identify pollutants and emissions in real time. For example, methane leaks are the second largest contributor to global warming after carbon dioxide, but they're invisible to the naked eye. Enter smart sensors to save the day. Social media. Give me those x-ray specs. Friday shower thoughts. A lifetime of inspiration. Get started with Ivy. 1. The first thing you get after obtaining a bachelor's degree is a sudden lack of respect for people with a bachelor's degree. 2. I always remember how to spell Wednesday by saying Wednesday. 3. You've known your parents your entire life, but they've only known you a fraction of theirs. 4. When I'm vacuuming and I can't get something off the floor, I'll run over it from 40 different angles for 5 minutes rather than taking 2 seconds to bend over and pick it up. 5. Both, I've waited for 10 years, I can wait a couple days longer, and I've waited for 10 years, I can't wait any longer, are equally sensible arguments via Reddit. Tell us what you think. Help keep the hustle honest by giving feedback on how you enjoyed the content in this week's emails. Don't worry, it's totally anonymous. We promise. Do better. Good stuff! This edition of The Hustle was brought to you by Listen Sound Company. Great headphones, great cause. When you buy a pair of Beats headphones, a few things happen. One, you pay far too much money. Two, Apple, which owns Beats, gets paid because they totally need more money. And three, you immediately look like everybody else. Ready for something different? Try Listen, a three-year-old headphone company out of Los Angeles. Their phones are high quality without the high price point, and they're stylish too. Each pair is encased in real ebony, zebra, or cherry wood. And did we mention you'll help someone here for the first time? As the only social enterprise in electronics, every Listen purchase helps someone hear for the first time through their partnership with Starkey Hearing Foundation. So far, Listen has helped 25,000 people all around the world, all while hooking customers up with go-to headphones that won't leave them looking identical to everyone on their subway car. You need to listen to us on this one, guys. We own a few pairs ourselves, also have also have one of their portable speakers and highly recommend you join the movement, which you can do at a 20% discount using the code HUSTLE20. Y'all welcome.
The Hustle. Subscribe, jobs, advertise, ambassadors, events. Kendall Heard That Baker, writer. Lindsay Quinn, a travel mug that never leaks. John Havel, backseat editor. Kurt and Rod, window dressers. You opted in by signing up, entering a giveaway, or through Divine Intervention, 1381 Ninth Avenue, San Francisco, California, 94122. In the United States, 415-506-7210. Never want to hear from us again? Break our hearts and unsubscribe.